Okay. Um, so I'm still playing around with this beach color scheme. I have iridescent pearl. I have a tinted version of this raw umber and then the raw umber itself. I have a seafoam green that I made simply by tinting phthalo blue. This is teal tinted. This is phthalo, sorry, this is phthalo green tinted, teal tinted, a uh, tint of the phthalo blue here. And then I have my solid teal that I have mixed some zinc white and interference blue into. Um, I don't think it has really changed the quality of the color and it certainly hasn't made it metallic from the inner, or I haven't seen the shimmer of the interference blue or green, but um, we shall see. Uh, and I will also be using some white and straight phthalo blue. Um, I have painted with this color scheme before and also had a metallic gold and the straight phthalo green in it, but I am cutting those two colors out this time. Okay, so I'm going to go with more of a linear stripe today. Um, And I don't really know what I'm doing. Just experimenting. Uh, I guess I am thinking about actual landscape appearance this time. Although I really prefer straight abstraction where any sort of recognizable objects are purely coincidental. Um, so, I'm, other than the order of the colors as you would see them in the seascape, I'm really not going to try to make a seascape. I'm just, just experimenting here. Okay, so I've got the raw umber, then I've got the tint of the raw umber, now I am, oh I poured out a cup of this, this is the iridescent pearl. Sort of picturing this being, well, uh, now I'm going for titanium white. Then we're going to go for sea foam green, which is just a tint of phthalo green. Then the tinted teal. The tinted phthalo blue. Um. After that, I guess I will go with the straight teal. And do I even want to do? I'm gonna, I'm going to get some of the phthalo blue, but I'm going to very sparingly dribble it along here because I don't really want the strength of that color to take over. And I eliminated thalo green, which I would have used next if I was sticking with that same color scheme I had before. Now what do I want to do? Part of me says to swipe up and down from the white midline. And I could also blow it with a straw. This is definitely off level. It's tilting that way, but right now I'm going to just let it do its thing because I want that spot to fill in. There it goes, and done. 
Okay, now, maybe if I... Whoa! How about that? Ay, ay, ay. Feel like it's downhill now. That's good. I have taped off the edges, so I'm not too worried about the drips on the side. And I'm going to pause the video and get a wet paper towel and try to do a wet paper towel swipe, I believe. Okay. Swiping up. Oh gosh, got to preserve my paints. That was almost bad. Get another paper towel and do that one more time. towels and a spray bottle. Very lightly. And I'll just let those corners be, see what happens. I like um, the fact that the, the dark raw umber is peeking back through so quickly, that's good. So I don't want the swipe to take over. And I might come in with a straw and rough up this area in a bit. But I'm gonna pause the video and just let it sit. All right, five minutes later, and I am liking it, but I am going to Trying to get you zoomed in a little bit. There. I am going to rough this area up with a straw. And maybe that area too, because that seems so obvious that my swipe just didn't touch the corner. I like these corners preserved. Uh, so it almost makes me feel like I need more solid color up here that doesn't have the swipe on it. Close up. Again, the sides are covered with tape, so I will be able to remove that and get a nice clean edge. But I will warn you if you plan to buy these PBO panels. 
the wood is really soft and the tape has actually ripped the grain and pulled up some of the grain on some of these. So I probably won't tape them again. This painting also ended up crazing. Uh, not as bad as the other two, but you can see it right there. That is unacceptable. Again, same problem. I did a whole batch of paint with a new a ratio trying to equal out the GAC 800 with the flow trial, but apparently uh, that's just not going to work. It's got to be three parts, at least three parts GAC 800, two parts flow trial, one part paint, no silicone, no water. That is the recipe we're going to stick with. Um, so, also, this the, this sort of slid to one side as it dried. I think I didn't put it on a level surface, so I wasn't super excited about it once I saw that either. So, no worries. We'll just paint on it again. Here we go again. This one, I don't know what I was thinking in the first place. It, a beach scene. I don't do that sort of thing. I don't know why I was trying to. I know why. I had just gotten back from the beach. And I love the color scheme. But I'm not trying to do landscapes here. I'm trying to do abstract, beautiful compositions. So I just need to stick with what the plan is. So it shifted anyway, and it didn't dry with a nice color. I mean, a nice um, surface. It was really garbledy and uh, I have not had that result until this last painting session and I think that like all the paint that I um, that I mixed up was just a bad batch so today I tried to pretty much start from scratch at least my white is brand new um, so what I'm doing now is I'm sort of training it to go over the sides because once I do the flip cup, I definitely want it to go over the sides. So I'm just um, wetting that lip so that it doesn't get caught with surface tension when it wants to flow over. Okay. And then we'll put a little more on there for good measure. We are using the same peacock color scheme because I love it. Uh, orange, brown, ultramarine blue. This is a tinted phthalo blue and this is tinted uh, phthalo green. And we'll use a flip cup. Um, I'm going to get a clean flip cup because I don't want that to be the reason that I don't like it. Alright, so a little bit of white. And then we're going to do our phthalo green. Oops, that was too much. I'm not going to get hardly any of the other colors. Phthalo blue. Although these are strong, so I don't know that I need a lot of these strong colors. Got your ultramarine blue. This is burnt sienna, my own mixture. Pretty much equal parts of my primary colors, which are Hansa, Yellow Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, and Thalo Blue. And this is the orange. Okay. Yeah. Settle for a second. That's pretty.
But settling, I'll go ahead and blow away some of the air bubbles, pop them with the heat gun. Okay, I'm gonna go this way this time. Into the corner, and then off the side. All right. Let it settle down for a second. I'll go to the opposite corner, see what happens. I don't want to lose it all in one spot. Okay. I like this ghosty uh, thing that's showing up under the white. That always ends up drying really beautiful because the white continues to sink. All right, I think I'm gonna go off this way. It's about to go crazy. That's enough of that. Now let's settle back. I'm gonna come off this side. I just don't, I don't like it. Come on, come on. There, okay. Whew. I'm going to leave it. I, right now, I'm not super happy with the composition, but I know if I mess with it too much more, I'm going to like it less and less. Um, it's a little too stretched in these spots, but maybe as it sits and settles, that will re redeem itself somehow. We'll see. So, some close-ups of this guy. before it dries. See how the orange is already popping through there more than it was before? Or can you? Is it focused? There it goes. Um, I predict that when it dries, that will be a lot more prominent. I really like that stripe of orange and how it did not mix with the blue. That's cool. Still not so excited about this area, but I don't know. Maybe we'll orient the canvas in a way that distracts from that. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. Which way it would be hung. Alright, bye for now.